What's up everybody, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with polynomial inequalities. A lot of times you'll get a question like this, where they'll give you a graph of two functions on the same graph, and then from the graph you have to figure out inequality. So here we're gonna figure out two of them. One is f of x less than g of x, one is f of x greater than g of x. So usually we've been given equations so far, we can algebraically do it. In this case, we're not given equations. We're just given the graphs of the functions, but we're also given their points of intersection, where both of these functions are intersecting. Right, so notice that we have f of x here in black, and then we have g of x here in purple. And these functions are intersecting at negative five and zero. At this point here, negative one, negative one, and then at this point here, three and two. And whenever you're doing a question like this, you need the points of intersection of the functions on the graph. Whenever you're given a graph and you have to figure out what the inequalities are, just visually, you need to get these points of intersection. So whether they are given to you like this or whether you have to approximate them on the graph, either way you have to get them. And actually with the points of intersection, the y values are not really important. So like the zero, negative one, the two. What's important is the x values. So this x value of three, here this x value of negative one, and then here this x value of negative five. Because that's the intervals that you have to look at, right? From negative infinity to negative five, from negative five to negative one, from negative one to three, and then from three to positive infinity. The y values you're not really gonna be using when answering these inequalities, right? Whenever you're answering an inequality question, the answer is always in terms of the x values. So I thought I would just make a remark on that. So let's start off with this one. When is f of x less than g of x? Well, you basically have to look for when is the graph of f of x going to be below the graph of g of x? Because if it's below it, it means the y values are less than the y values of g of x. So notice how in this first interval from negative infinity, or from negative five to negative infinity, f of x is below g of x. The y values are less than g of x. So that's actually one of the intervals, right? So when x, is less than negative five. And if you wanna put this in set notation, it would be from negative infinity to negative five. So interval notation or set notation. So that's one interval where the graph of f of x is below g of x. What about in this interval here between negative five and negative one? Well, notice how f of x is greater than g of x, it's above g of x. So that's actually going to be one of the intervals here. So let's actually write that. So between negative 5 and negative 1, right, f of x is above g of x. The y values are greater. If you want to put this in set notation, you can write x as an element between negative 5 and negative 1. Let's move to this. Uh, interval here between negative one and three. Notice how g of x is greater than f of x. g of x is above f of x or f of x is below g of x. So this interval here is for this inequality, right? f of x is less than g of x. So when x is between negative one and three, or when x is an element between negative one and three. That's another way to write it, interval notation or set notation. And then this final interval here, f of x is always gonna be greater than g of x. So that's this inequality. So when x is greater than three, or if we wanna put that in set notation, x is an element from three to positive infinity. Right, and those are your final answers. So that's how you look at it visually. If they give you two graphs, you basically have to see when is the function, a certain function above another one. And you wanna look at it in intervals. And the intervals 
are dictated by the x values of the points of intersection, right? So point of intersection here at an x value negative 5, here at an x value negative 1, and then here at an x value of 3. We don't really care about the intercepts of the functions, right? They may actually give those to you in a question just to trick you because we're not looking at just when a function is greater than zero or less than zero. We're looking for when a certain function is less than another one or greater than that other one. So we got to look at the points of intersection and then those x values tell us the intervals to look at. Right, so that's basically how you do it. Just look for when the functions are above or below each other.